I'm sorry, I'm not uh, try to uh, side the so-called art bureau. But you know that some of these guys, they have means of livelihood from this. Uh, crime rate reduce. Mm. Suppose we decide that, oh, don't even do this art bureau. How much are you making there per day? Get a skill. We first of all, for the next six months, we give you this money. We give you these skills. As you are finishing this skill, uh, this training, you are getting on job. You are even having an apartment. Somebody that is living on that bridge. And I'm telling you, I'm giving you a room self contained, well furnished for your program. Mm. And Abba. So you think they will focus on that instead of going to come find money? Yes. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes. New episode, new week. We have some interesting people in the studio today, so hopefully we're going to have a fun but interesting day. Education as well. I've been learning a lot already. I've been catching up with Dari uh, here. I've been catching up with Shalewa. I've been catching up with Chinedu. So it's going to be a lot of good chats. But... Before I would actually start this week, I would say that Shalewa has still not come back from London. I don't understand why she's leaving us alone in this Nigeria. But we'll, we'll address that later on. And I think she hopefully she'll join us very soon and you would hear her. Uh, but today, what's most important, we have Mr. Dari in the building, Olare Waju. Uh, he's the founder of Oxford Tech, uh, but also very known for his work. Actually, he has three companies, not just Oxford Tech, some other very interesting ones. And, and you will hear more about it. Uh, later on but Dari welcome welcome nice to have you welcome to our move back and um, really I move back was really to kind of um, to give people in the diaspora a little bit of understanding of some of the great things that people are doing in Nigeria and uh, obviously your, your work was picked up and I would like to know a little bit more about yourself so just please introduce yourself for us okay thank you so much uh, it's, a great, it's a great pleasure to be here I'm Olu Dari Olariwaju uh, founder and uh, CEO of uh, Rautech, and uh, I also have some other company, just as you also mentioned. So, basically, in Rautech, we focus on uh, design and uh, development of uh, enterprise uh, software solutions. We've developed solutions in the area of uh, tax, uh, revenue generation. Uh, uh, revenue assurance. Uh, we've also built applications uh, that has to do with the uh, educational sector. This I that happened to be our core. I can authoritatively say that one of our applications called school care was used during the lockdown by uh, some federal government uh, use uh, own unity schools like Casey, Queen's College, and some private schools. Mm. And uh, this is a platform that has even processed over one million US dollars for those clients. Ah, you guys are making money. So, you guys are making some serious money. It so, means. And uh, we also uh, focus on uh, quality assurance and software testing, mm. uh, whereby we help organizations uh, to ensure that their systems uh, are of high quality, and uh, beside, to the glory of God, I happen to be the president of Association of Nigerian Software Testers. Okay, so it's Nigeria. a lot. It's a lot there. I need to unpack a lot all these things because, <laughs> like, you're just sending me left, right, center right now. So, do me a quick favor, right? Tell me a little bit about the what you do on a day to day. Like, or, or, is it the Oxford Tech, or do you spend more time in the other part of your entrepreneurship? So, wh where do you spend most of your time on? Uh, I spend most of my time with our engineering team. Okay, so you build systems. System, different yeah. projects. Uh, I woke up in the morning, probably uh, I start my day, let's say from 10 a.m. 10 a.m. in the morning? In okay. the morning with developers. Once I finish, I spend like one or two hours uh, on the call. I join another team of developers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, probably I, I might do that around 2 p.m. Okay. <laughs> so, so there's there's I mean in in Nigeria there's a kind of a huge tech boom or tech ecosystem at the moment that's kind of, that's, that's actually becoming a little bit more more mature now. Yeah. There's people who have been raising financing. There's uh, a lot of new innovations. People who have good exits as well yeah. going on. So 
what would you say is the kind of underlying reason why we're getting such a boom in, in the tech space? What is the reason? What are you seeing is happening? Uh, actually, uh, our ecosystem is, uh, is really green. And I can say authoritative, authoritatively that our, uh, our ecosystem is still the biggest in Africa, even in terms of uh, solutions, number of uh, startups, we are still the biggest. And uh, uh, recently, today, I saw it online, FISA is uh, setting up its accelerator program for fintech in Africa. Yeah, okay. visa, yeah. So, and these are, and uh, let me say it, Nigeria happened to be one of the main place. So, uh, I think they are coming to Nigeria safe. So, is, uh, we, we, let me say we've, we've paid our dues. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nigerian tech uh, guys. And uh, that's why we are experiencing this boom. Hi, I'm Backers. We have something amazing for you today. Ever thought about actually owning a piece of property in the UK and finding it difficult to navigate through the market? Well, we have the service that you need. The London Home Finders service is here to help you through that process. Their expert team can allow you to source the right properties, put the team together in terms of solicitors, mortgage brokers, that can get you the properties at the right price and can help you secure your investment. Now, why would you want to consider this? Putting, investing in UK properties seems to be one of the safest methods for investing in properties. And the demand for properties in the UK is increasingly going high every day. So this is opportunity allows you to own a property in the UK that you can either use for rental or you can use for as a home for yourself so find your best properties today at london home finder services and don't forget to subscribe to i move back yeah we are really doing great that's interesting so so i i know you, i mean i looked on your profile i said you're a serial it entrepreneur so you are, you have two other companies yes as well yes. that does something yes. very similar yes. now the question is a lot of entrepreneurs in this space they juggle a couple of things yeah. right so there's like did you have one idea they have a couple of other ideas and do you feel like that is a benefit or hindrance in terms of doing more than one thing at the same time okay. How, what, what's your opinion about that okay thank you so much uh i'm going to use apple as a case study uh, there is a book written by former vice president of uh, apple in that book I got to know that even the product that gave a Apple their breakthrough, that has to, that has to do with touch screen. Mm. As at the time, that product, before the product became a reality, Apple had several projects going on. They were laying, the, they laid their hands on different things going, okay, this will work, this will work. And by the time, uh, the idea about the touch screen came, came on board. Beside, there was a particular project Apple was working on. The board of Apple thought that that was the project that would give them the breakthrough. And when uh, Steve Jobs came on board, oh, this is a new project we want to work on. Beside, the project manager for that project, according to the, what was written in that book, was not happy. He even pushed, he, to the extent that he pushed the CEO and the founder of the company that, no, we can't bring this product on board. But Steve Jobs just created another team. And when the whole thing became reality, everybody was happy. The point I was just trying to make is, in, uh, when it comes to innovation, you need to have open minds. You need to ensure that uh, as the ideas are coming, yes, you have to be strategic. And in taking risks, you don't just take risks. You have to uh, calculate. Uh, you have to know, uh, okay, the level of risk and how you are going to take it. So it is very okay and encouraging if you are able to manage different, uh, uh, try different ideas. Mm. Because if you don't want to take risk, you don't know the one that will, that will become your your successful product. Well, that right. so, you, you product. so you think taking risk in different areas and yes, strengthening out yes. the best. And you're also learning from that. Mm. 
Besides, that happened to be one of the core area of our strength in my company. Let me give you an example. In, I'm sorry, I just have to no, be go ahead, sure. When you, when you see a company, some company they've gone to raise money, and that's one of the areas where some of our fees are getting it wrong. If I've gone to raise money for this particular, I want to build this phone. The fees will compel me that, oh, this is what you should put all your life on. But it's possible within that one year of, let's say two years I'm working on that product. The product is already in market. There is need for, to innovate. Even there could be some better idea because as you are working on a product, there are some ideas as you are getting feedback from clients, from end user. Those feedbacks are what even enable, might even require that you, are, you have to build another product that will far, far better than what you have already built. Mm. But that product might even be what will give you, let's say, times 20 of your investment. But if you are insisting that this is, some investor will tell you, this is what you should be doing. Don't do any of that thing. Mm. That's what does. This is one of the reasons that has killed some companies. A lot of companies, yeah, because they don't have it. a lot of um, risk. Really? So that is risk it. is all spread. So that focus on it. one area. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a debatable topic, and I'm always interested in the answer, but yeah. some people believe that you should focus, some people believe you should diversify. So, yeah, and also, people depend on the different time of, of, the, yeah. of the day to do that. So let's talk a little bit about kind of your other activities in this place, right? Yeah. So, um, you want to talk about Oxatech? Is that, is yes. that something you want to... Yeah. Yes. So let's, let's dive a bit more. What is Oxatech? What do you guys do? Kind of how, how is your system set up? Okay. Actually, uh, Ostratech, even though it's still a new company, still like a new baby, uh, let me just say it has not really start, uh, started any uh, activities. But we actually have a product that is meant to... Uh, we plan to use to kickstart uh, Australia, which happened to be uh, a, a platform whereby any organization can come on board. You want to, you have different branches, but you want people to easily have access to your branches, your product easily. And at the same time, even if you are a service provider, I could be a professional, I could be a technician, and whatever I can, is, I can have more or less like a shop there. People can reach me. They can get access to my services and my product. So there's, uh, and there are some other features that we, we put on the platform. So that platform, Australtech is meant to take care of that uh, product. That's mm -hmm. our plan. Yes. Okay. And, and so uh, enterprise software is like interesting, right? But the, the problem with people feel is, okay, Pricing is a huge part of it because obviously, like for that, but if you're a startup company, you're trying to afford the enterprise software. It's expensive. Yeah. Are you guys trying to solve some of that problems, or how are you trying to think about it? Okay. Yeah. You know, it, nowadays, uh, enterprise solutions. What we do now is for some of us, we make the solution to be SaaS based, software as a service. Okay. Yeah. In such a way that you pay for what you need. Mm. And so it's so affordable. Some we even make in such a way that you use it first, get revenue, and you pay us. Okay, so you, so you kind of spread it. But when you say software service, you're spreading it with other users as well, not the same, not just only one company, right? Yes. So yes. it makes it a little bit more it affordable. Makes, yes. Yeah. yes. So, yes. do you have any questions? How, how are you feeling right now? I know you're a bit quiet up in London. So <laughs> I'm trying to understand because, you know, obviously, Olidara is doing a lot. And I'm just trying to follow um, what he's doing. So my first question is, with this Oxatech now, who's the global competitor so we can get a better understanding of what you're trying to deliver? Sorry, I didn't get the question. Who's the global competitor for Oxatech? Like, who are, who are you looking at globally? I'm thinking, okay, I'm competing with that company. Okay, uh, if I say, yes, you know, we have quite a number of uh, e-commerce uh, platforms. You understand? So, but the way we've built the platform is not really an e-commerce. Because let me give it to a case study. I want to go to the, uh, let's say, the nearest Mr. Biggs, or let's say the nearest Chicken Republic. Mm. But, okay, I pick my phone, or I can see their nearest branch. Probably I can even order for my food. Is it a good day I picked? Uh, I can even book ahead. I'm coming to eat. 
Mm. Can you reserve my space for me? Or can they deliver my food? So there are quite a number of companies that are doing similar things, but we are doing it different in other ways, mm. in such a way that we, uh, because we've actually, in the industry, we've built quite a number of solutions. So we are now trying to bring some of our past work together on a particular platform. Both the, it is going to have both web and mobile. Now let me say to the glory of God, the solution is uh, 90% completed. Mm. You understand? So currently we are even testing. We are testing it. So uh, there are quite a number of companies that are doing that, uh, but our business models and the features on our platforms on our platform are different. Okay. So what, what makes you what makes you quite interesting? Is it are you you beat everyone on price? You like how do you what makes like also check more interesting than going with another company to build like a enterprise solution? Okay. For now our business model is okay, we want as many as possible to sign up. Sign up on the platform, uh, use the platform and by the time we are ready to start monetizing we we'll, we already have a uh, way of monetizing. Mm. Monetize so it. a lot of a lot of businesses find it hard to raise funding, right? And yeah. obviously everybody has their own reason why. Yeah. But most of the time it's kind of having the right product market fit, ensuring you have the right team on XYZ. Yeah. So with with your business right now, how do you go ahead? Do you raise external funding? How do you kind of put it together? Because some, somebody might be looking at you right now thinking they want to have a business like yours, but how do you go ahead to kind of set it up when Money is hard to find. Hard to find. Okay, uh, let me say that uh, uh, the journey has not been that easy. You understand? Uh, when you have a product that you know is viable and uh, you are trying to raise funds for it and uh, you meet different VC and, and the likes and they tell you come back, blah, blah, blah. But one thing that has uh, really helped my company, which I must say it categorically, is that we don't put all our eggs in one basket. Uh, what we do, there are some other businesses we do in such a way that we use the funds from that biz, those businesses to fund our applications. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example. Because of my background, I, my company, we're also into soft, uh, soft uh, let me say, uh, uh, security and safety solutions, whereby we install CCTV, uh, time attendance solutions. These are some of the projects that we do. We get money from that. So the money we get from such projects, we use it to build applications and we take the application to market mm -hmm. and we generate funds from the market, from those applications. Although it's not easy, there are some applications you build, you can just get a client that, oh, can you whitelist this for me? Can you make can you make this product customize this application for you? Okay, we pay you four million. We pay you five million. Okay, so it's it's not very specific. Then it's kind of up to the markets and when you guys have funding. What do you say? Is it up to the markets when you get funding? Like, is it you have to get a product out there before you get money in? Yes, 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 okay. yes. So we don't. Our business model is that okay. We don't want to wait for uh, uh, investors. Oh, to Before come in, build. yeah, you just start we build, getting revenue. We take it to market, yeah. we generate revenue. Yeah. So and how, how quick does it take to get to market, though, or like a software solution? Like how, how quick? Okay, uh, let me say uh, the most important aspect of any software solution is your MVP, minimum viable product. Mm. Ensure that your MVP gets to market early. I can say it categorically based on my own uh, experience so far. Within three and four months, if you have a dedicated team that are hardworking and you are able to oversee it, you should have your MVP, mm. depending on the complexity. But if you have a dedicated team, you can. You can get your MVP as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. Saleva, what do you think about this uh, speed to MVP and all this situation? What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because obviously, um, I like what you said about if you have a dedicated team, because in my experience, my story when I had started with my tech startup was, you know, I'm very mama Africa. I said, I want to hire Nigerian developers. Don't go and hire from India, you know? And literally, I think that the problem was 
um, Nigerian developers, I don't know if it's because of the pay, I don't know if it's because of the structure, but there were two major issues that we found. Um, the first issue was like um, quality of work. So accuracy, um, finishing, you know, striving to actually, you know, to, to convert the Figma designs to the actual product. There were so many errors. So we're facing things like that. Um, and secondly, I think that sometimes many developers have multiple jobs at the same time. So un unless you have a good project manager, you're also, they're also struggling to meet timelines. So I want to know how you've dealt with this. Are you actually hiring your own staff um, in-house and you're monitoring them? Or do you outsource to a company? Because in my experience, a lot of my friends that are founders have had a lot of issues using Nigerian developers to build their products. Yeah, thank you so much uh, uh, for, the, do, for the insight. Uh, Nigerian uh, dev guys, yes, some of them, they could be somehow in terms of the area of uh, delivery of product. Yes, we've had that experience. We've had that experience. However, what I believe uh, there is a major challenge is one, whoever that is leading the team is very key. A lot of people will come on board, I will tell you that, oh, I'm a PM. Look at their track record. They will tell you they've managed a project. I can tell you quite a number of projects. It's not that we've not failed. I can give you a typical example of a product. We didn't have money to execute the product. We started the product, we started working. And it got a particular time. Just a developer, we released the MVP. But the developer was supposed to put a particular feature that should enable the <laughs> application to have a large number of uh, users. But the developer indirectly Head us into ransom. You understand? Mm. But well, was he was he on the critical path and he said he's not going to work anymore? Like explain. What yes, uh, what happened was it was just because of funding. Let me put it that way. Okay, said he's not working anymore. Yes, okay. but he didn't even say that he was not working anymore. You know, when somebody other team member was still working, but when somebody was just being like a desicule, was not forthcoming. You understand? And this is somebody that, let me say, prior to COVID-19, oh, Mr. Dari, please, if I can even get a job of uh, uh, maybe pay me 150, 150 or 250K, I'll be happy. We, because he got a, a friend recommended him. He gave him a job, he was doing it on part-time basis. At least he was getting us less than 150K. I can tell you to the glory of God, within four months, he got a job that he's giving with different horse, part-time, over 400K. But he, let me just say the guy was not just, uh, uh, he could not organize himself well. Mm. But what we did, we didn't allow that to affect us. The aspect we can manage, we manage it well. And I can tell you by the time we are ready to take the decision, we took the necessary decision, everything went well. And the product is life. And we've even done our best. We have clients on the platform. So it has to do with uh, the people that are managing. Mm -hmm. I've seen some companies that even the developer even scattered the entire structure. So mm -hmm. the, the thing that what amazed me about you, you've been able to deliver software solutions for customers that is gaining revenue or earning revenue, and you develop a lot of products, products, right? Yes. So you must have a formula yeah. that seems to work with managing Nigerian developers. Yes, yes. Can you show with us what that is? Okay, first and foremost, you need to have experienced project manager who knows how, you see managing developers they are human beings as well let me tell you the latest time i sleep probably 2 a.m 3 a.m like today i sleep around 4 a.m mm. so you as a developer when you are supposed to sleep you sleep you understand but we need to understand them as well you need to, even if you don't even have the funding to pay them the way they are supposed to be paid, 
see them as uh, as uh, uh, let me use the word human being. Mm. Care about them, but so, although some of them, if you give them that too too much, uh, let me use the word uh, too much. Uh, I'm trying to look for the appropriate word. Too much uh, romancing. Romancing. <laughs> they misuse it. Yeah. Besides, that was what happened to this developer. But I can tell you to the glory of God, about two weeks ago, he called me, uh, Mr. Diary, are you still angry with me? Ah, I said, my, which is true. I told my team members, ah, mm. this person called, though. Once, uh, once we are having another project, I'll bring you out. They said, ah, where will you bring me? I said, in life. He has learned his lesson. And this is somebody that, within that period, I can tell you, because of the training he has gone from our company, he got a, a project, a job of $5,000 per month from Mandela. I can mm. see it categorically. Somebody that started with one one fifty, mm. five thousand dollars. But guess what? I'm sorry, I just have to say it because character matters. Mm. I don't just get you maybe because you are intelligent, because I know you may think you know, but by the time you get enter our system, you know that if you don't, even if you don't even understand mathematics well, you can fail on some project in my company. Mm. Um, but I mean, thank you for that. Sorry, Dare. I also wanted to ask you because obviously there's so many trends going on right now, even in the software development space. For example, you have no code um, platforms that you could potentially use. Um, artificial intelligence is also making it a little bit easier um, for software developers to get assistance with the writing code. So I actually want to get your opinion on both of those things because sometimes with no code solutions they're good for uh, simple applications but I don't know how much somebody can build on them when you want to have more complex solutions and and again with artificial intelligence you know it's still in its early days sometimes it make it makes errors but if you look at it it's possible within the, in the next two to three years you may not even need software developers that much anymore so what are your opinions on that as well Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, yes, there are some application. There are some uh, quite a number of uh, let me use the word solutions online that will tell you no code. Yes, we've seen that, but uh, I can still say it categorically that we still need you still need the software developers. Yes, some of these solutions. Let me say we make their work easier. It's like when you are developing uh, software now. Let's say you are using a Visual Studio or whatever. There are some suggestions. Instead of you, suppose your, your lines of code have some errors. Mm. The system will suggest to you, this is where the errors are. Mm. You understand? It makes their work what? Faster. Mm. So, but there are still some uh, aspect of, uh, especially when you are building your algorithms. There are still some limitations that uh, even all this low code, whatever, no code, whatever, cannot handle. So we still need them. We still need these developers. But this, let me use the word, the smart ones, dedicated ones among them, the ones that, are, that have good character, they will still be relevant. Mm. They will still be relevant. And uh, in the area of uh, artificial intelligence as well, yes, Artificial intelligence is here to stay, but we still have a lot, a lot, a lot of work to be done. Uh, one of the father of uh, AI said something on LinkedIn recently that uh, in that video, uh, the man said, we still need to, uh, first and foremost, we still need to do what? Put the right structure, let me use the word regulations in place for the AI. Yes, the AI is good, a lot of things are happening. But if if we are not uh, careful and we are trying to put all our let me say all our uh, brain mm. activities on AI, uh, he, he, uh, he could get a particular stage that uh, we might find it difficult to uh, to be, yeah, let me use word, it could make us to be lazy. Let me use that word. Mm. It could make us to be lazy. If at this, let me give you a typical example. 
you know, if you are typing on your phone, the phone will give you suggestion, right? Mm. Oh, this is a, this is this is master before you type it. But if you are not careful, if you continue to use it, let's assume that you, are, you get to an interview or you need to write something down. You may forget some, how to write some words. I don't know. Um, dependable, but go ahead. Yes. So it's good, but we it's not. Uh, we shouldn't be too reliant on it. Yeah. Yes. yes. I yes. think very thing if you take it. Yes. That's kind of yes. So, but for in the area of uh, software development, yes, a lot of things will be automated. Mm. It, yes. So a lot of things. So, but we just need to ensure that. Let's assume that you have five engineers. By the time you automate your pro, your your process, later you may even have three. You know mm-hmm. that those three, they are the people, let's say that that can that have a good understanding of your product. That because if you are a software developer, if I want to, if if we are working, and you need to use a equation of a straight line, mm-hmm. a straight a equation of a straight line, that's y equal to m c plus c, m x plus c, yeah. m x plus c. Mm-hmm. We've used it to solve a problem before. But if we are trying to build an algorithm and you're software developers in our team and you don't know how it. So by the time we automate it, you will be among the people that will go. Hmm. So you, if you think you would you get rid of a developer because it doesn't know the fundamental maths? Some, if you can't cope. Yes, if you can't cope. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting. Okay, so do you have any, other, any questions if you're going through your mind? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it's the final thing is another thing that I've noticed really, and it, it's it's sad in a way, but a lot of the developers in Nigeria, I believe, are self-taught, um, and so what that means is sometimes they're missing that kind of structural theoretical understanding to uh, to what they're doing, you know. But I don't really know what the the long term solution is for something like that. I don't know if Dario has any sorry, I didn't get thoughts on I that didn't as get well. That question. So, so, it, so a lot of, do you find, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, I think she was saying that a lot of developers in Nigeria are, they, they are so thought mean that they learn by themselves. Yes. Watching videos online, XYZ. But there needs to be, I mean, when you're kind of training or something, you need to kind of have both kind of the practical side, but also the theoretical side. Good. That teaches you the fundamentals. Yes. So she's, what she's saying is that, like, how have you, what do you think about that? Yes. And, that, and then how does that affect work? Okay, that's one of their major problems. You can see some of them, they will tell you, oh, they they can write a line of code, they've read, they've listened to watch videos online. You understand? So, but they've not really get, they've not got into this, a level whereby they are involved in real life projects. But you, as a client, the guy can get somebody's code, put it on GitHub, show you, they demo something for you. You will think that this guy is good. <laughs> you give him money. We give him money <clears throat> two years, one year. I've quite a number of stories that I've heard. Yeah. I have a client. Besides, she she managed uh, one of the, uh, let me say, community. She was telling me, Dari, we paid a developer, somebody in the ecosystem, senior guy, recommended this guy. Two years, the product... It's not fun. live. It's not live. So, and that's their challenge. I have, there is a guy, he joined my company, uh, uh, Pet and Gas in a he, he spent three months. But what this guy learned within that three months, I exposed him to a project that we built as far back as 20, 2016. Mm-hmm. Enterprise solution. The guy said, within that three months, Mr. Dari, thank you so much. I've learned a lot. But if I tell you the number of projects that this guy is working on now, his parents are not paying him anything. Besides, there's a national project he work on. I won't mention that agency. But he got this thing three months. But he worked on real life project and he was ready to learn. Mm. But the, the, well, the question around the theoretical side of things, how can developers learn theoretically? So what, what I mean by theoretical, uh, and most of you can attest to this, you go to school, right? Yeah. You, you let's say you learn. Let's say, just take a simple example: carpentry, right? Yes. You've got the whole um, what's that design design uh, co- uh, co- course that you take with, at school level? 
okay maybe technical design or whatever is it's it a technical drawing technical drawing yes. yeah and then you've got the carpentry in real life right yes when you mix both together it becomes like you're more of a whole personal profession yeah. right so the question now becomes like in in nigeria as, as in are there schools that are much more structured that can teach these developers how to kind of put things in a theoretical way while also then practically working on real life projects like what well, you talked about about a real life project but from a theoretical perspective are there schools allowing them to understand the fundamentals of those tools that they're working on before using them using them okay so i if i got your consecration right that are the school teaching them the theoretical aspect of it mm. yes they do they do to a very large extent they do uh, last week Friday, we interviewed a guy. I was really amazed with what they are doing in school. Uh, one university from Southwest Executive State University. Very uh, interesting uh, programs they have in that school. Mm. However, uh, the in-depth of what they teach them in school is not that, uh, let me use the word, the, the school are really try, but the in-depth is not really, uh, let me say it's not, uh, it's not deep. Mm. Because, and and that happened to be the one of the challenges in our educational system. Somebody studying computer science, that person maybe for from year one to year five, year four, you bombard the person with too many courses. Mm. But if the person want to focus on maybe front end, let's say by year two, the person should be very good. At front end, yeah. Yes. Theoretical aspect, some practical aspect of it, they can even start working in the industry. But some of them that are smart now, right from year two, they are already working for some companies outside the school. So they are getting the theoretical part in school, they are getting the practical aspect with some startups they are working with. Mm. So, and that's what my company will give that. Currently, I have nothing less than six Unilag undergraduate with me. There are more than six, eight, apart from senior developers. And, okay, we even have some from uh, uh, one university in the Southwest as well, Obama, so, uh, Lautech. And, and they are great guys. Now, by some, in the next one or two years, now some of them, what they're even doing, they can do what the senior guys are doing. They are doing what maybe what uh, the guy that is already working for, and then some of them are already doing. I can tell you categorically. Mm, interesting. So, for, I mean, it's always important that we we kind of forecast a, a bit on the the development of talent in Nigeria because also yeah. people people. So I, I I feel that Nigeria would probably become something like the Asian countries like India and hopefully China soon. China, yeah. From the hardware side, hopefully, but software side maybe India. Yeah. where a lot of outsourcing work for software and all these things can go to yeah right um what would you what do you think it would take for us to get there to that point that we are becoming another india, india. in terms of uh, the talent talent pool. okay yeah. great uh first and foremost our government ne needs to create that enabling environment what does that mean, though? That that word enabling environment pisses me off because I don't, actually don't know what that means. Like, okay. what does an en enabling environment actually mean? Okay, okay. Let me. Uh, uh, I'm going to start from angle of school and the industry. We have young guys that are in school. They are eager to learn. And but our educational system does not allow them to have that time to get industry experience. You see, if we could have a system whereby government can say that, okay, as a student, maybe you have a number of hours to work per day in school academic work. You have maybe some hours during the day to also apply, uh, work in the industry. It will go a long way. Some of them, they are already doing it. Mm. But how does that, how is that an enabling environment? How does that involved with governments and like what does that how does that mean what does that first mean first and that? foremost uh, in terms of regulation you understand because if we have a system whereby government is saying that okay even if you are under if you are, if you are an undergraduate you can work uh, and you can work 
and thank God for, for this uh, student loan, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of things that we need to get right there. So we need to have a proper regulation that will enable that, that will enable these our young ones to be able to to work. But that work also, government needs to help the entrepreneurs as well, the startups. Mm. Uh, we need to help them. Whereby, if as an as a startup uh, founders now founder now, I have guys that are working for me. But if I don't have uh, a kind of environment whereby maybe when the government is as a, a tech job, tech related job project, you decided to give it to maybe a company outside that is not even in Nigeria, mm. you are sourcing less than millions of dollars. But if you give it to some startup here in Nigeria, let's say five, mm. the money comes, stays here. We recruit as many as possible dedicated mm. Nigerians who can do this job. Mm. You understand? So that means we are encouraging these our younger ones yeah. to learn on the job. I agree with you. Yes. So, I mean, a classic example was the e-Naira that, that was uh, introduced in Nigeria. There's a lot of fintech talent in Nigeria and the number one fintech product that Nigeria should actually have was not built by Nigerians and I that see. was very sad. That's most very sad. So it's, yeah, but at the end of the day, um, it comes to that kind of ingrained culture that we always feel like better is outside, right? And that's something that needs to be addressed as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, I think Salewa has some trivial questions. I don't know if you, have, yeah, you want to do them or do you want me to handle it? In case your audio is not working, I'll, I'll try. Uh, but how's... All right, all right. Let me let me see if I can I can give it a good go. Okay. But uh, our trivia questions are relatively very simple. I think the idea is just to kind of test out to see how well you know okay. of your industry. Uh, and and uh, Salewa has put together some really interesting questions. Okay. So the first question is, what is the name of the world's first humanoid robot? Okay, 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 okay. Ah, uh, is this? I think I first humanoid robot. I know there is a late a. A, fem a feminine robot. I can't remember the name, but I know. You're close. Is, Go ahead. is it Sarah or something like? <laughs> it's not Sarah. It's, it's Sophia. Sophia. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, you're, you're, you're close. Yeah, okay, Sophia. that's good. Yes. Yeah, All right, we're getting there. It's not bad. Not bad start. Okay. <laughs> who Who is considered the father of AI for his contribution to the theory of computation and invention of the Turing machine? Or uh, Turing machine, not Turing machine. Turing is machine. you know Alan Turing? Is you know Alan Turing? Alan Turing, that's correct. That's correct. <laughs> that's All right. Up here. Next one is ah oh, interesting. Okay, what is the name of the famous AI humanoid robot developed by Hanson Robotics that has granted citizenship by Saudi Arabia? Ah, okay. I've seen it, but I can't remember. I know about it. <laughs> it's a trick question, but give a guess. <laughs> Ah, is it not that same Sophia? You're right, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, how many right? Two is actually quite good. Okay. What is what is the term for a robot that moves around its environment without the need for human guidance? Uh, autonomous ro robots. Is that okay, nice? correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, what is the name of the AI voice assistant developed by Apple? Tell me why these questions are so simple. What is the name, <laughs> what is the name of the AI robot? <laughs> AI voice assistant developed by Apple. Ah, okay. I think uh, I, I, I can, uh, I can. I, you know this one? What do you say? The name, what is the name of the AI voice assistant developed by Apple? Oh, Siri. Is it not Siri? Siri. Okay, Siri, Siri, Siri. Right. Okay, I thought you are referring, you know, they just released some product recently. <laughs> uh, Wait, did they release a new product? Uh, yes, no. Uh, the, I saw something on LinkedIn yesterday. Uh, so many things, yeah. Oh, the vision, vision Apple, Apple Vision, VR yeah, yeah. and uh, AR, yes. Yeah, yeah. This, yes. So that's that's actually, I mean, that's actually quite interesting. And but but then get the price for that. That's what everyone's complaining about right now. Uh, I think okay. it's over three thousand dollars. So people, are, but I think people will still buy it. People will still buy it. People will still buy it because you're. It's a different experience compared to a computer. That is completely it. different experience. So, so and that is it. And the price, I think that of uh, Meta is around three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, so sure, that's the problem. Is that, but then again, it's depends on the it, the thing is that those things that when you introduce something new, it's always gonna be expensive yes. until you get to a point where 
you're achieving scale. Yeah. There's more kind of interaction, more first party components that you can probably charge for sure. and XYZ yeah. that, that can help you. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's very interesting. So uh, uh, maybe Salah might have some questions uh, for it, but I, I do have one question. Um, okay. If you were in kind of related to your, your field, okay. if you were the president of Nigeria, okay. right, what would you do differently? Um, basically, I will, I will focus on uh, human capital development. Human capital development. Okay, so yes. break that down. What does that mean? I will ensure that our youth are well equipped with the 24, don't let me use the word 21st century, fourth industrial revolution compliance skills. So fourth industrial revolution compliance skills. skills. That is something in the area of robotics, AI, artificial intelligence, drone technology, mm. Because these are the future. I will invest there. Mm. You can see all these are guys that you see on the road. Mm. On the road. Maybe all these street guys. Let me tell you, if you engage them, nobody there's nobody that wants to be miscreant. Mm. But if you can ensure that people you take care of their their let me use your shelter, their feeding and basic needs of life. Mm. And you give them home, okay, I want you to achieve these skills. If we can't, if they go, I'm sorry I have to use it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I'm not uh, try to uh, side the so-called ag bureau. But you know that some of these guys, they have means of livelihood from this. Uh, crime rate reduce. Mm -hmm. Suppose we decide that, oh, don't even do this ag bureau. How much are you making there per day? Get a skill. We first of all, for the next six months, we give you this money. We give you these skills. As you are finishing this skill, uh, this training, you are getting on job. You are even having an apartment. Somebody that is living on that bridge, and I'm telling you, I'm giving you a room self contained, well furnished, for your program. Mm. And uh, abba. So you think they will focus on that instead of going to come find money? Yes, and our youth as well. If we can do that, it will take it. Just as you mentioned, China and India. Human capital development. That's how they go. Especially India. Most of their people travel abroad, they still come back. There is a particular city in China, in India, it's like a Silicon Valley. And they generate billions of, over 100 billions of dollars annually. Well, on just tech? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's, I know that Nigeria does. 550 billion but i don't know how much percentage is to take so but i don't think it's still scratching the surface anyway it's, it's not, it's not. there's a lot there's a lot a lot of work to do yeah okay so anyway, any, any any questions from your end anything you want to add to this before we wrap up um I'm, I'm i'm good i feel like the only the final thing that came to my head because i know that Dara is also interested in robotics I don't know if you saw that robot that was in um, in VI. I, don't, I think it was, was it First Bank? They had a robot, a self-service robot. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. You see the um, robot in VI? VI. Self-service self robot. Uh, no, no. I know there was one that was introduced in Unilag uh, Library, whereby it can help you to do some uh, activities when mm. you're in library. So it was introduced during the COVID-19, which mm. I saw online. So uh, I would like to see the self-service. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, when it comes to robotics, I really envy this company called, uh, I don't know, they're still Boston. the same name. Is it the one in Boston US? Dynamics. Boston Dynamics, yes. Yeah, they, they used to be... Boston Dynamics. Yeah, their, their, their stuff is scary, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, they make it so like, yeah, so interesting. But they've, they've had some really interesting like technologies over the years. But you can see how they're, they started with a lot of failures and then they kept That's on giving him money and so they get to a point that That's it's um, it. it's it makes sense. But yeah, they've got some really interesting stuff. That's I mean, even the other, there's even an American um, government agency called DARPA. Okay. And I think it's a kind of a, it's a uh, military agency. They're also involved in developing robots and oh, stuff like that. So yeah. it's quite, quite cool. Um, but yeah, no, it's very good chatting. Hopefully you, you build the next couple of uh, s solutions that can take us out of this uh, poverty that we're in right now. Yes, that's... But yeah, we're looking forward to that. That would be that would be interesting. No, nice meeting you again. Same and uh, yeah, 
we'll catch up to you. Keep right. us updated on the work you're doing. Okay. And then, yeah, catch up soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Bye, Salewa. Oh, actually, no, you're going to stay here. You're okay. not going anywhere. Hey, right. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Stay here. This podcast is sponsored by Go Money. Open a new bank account from your phone in less than three minutes.